wrestling fanatics, welcome to the Queen's Takeover. Thank you for joining us as we take over the podcast world. It's your girl Kat, aka the Texas Sport Queen. We also have the Carolina Boss Lady Kayla. Hello. And our resident adjuster, Jolie. Sup? Hey, fanatics, we are back. Another crazy episode with your crazy trio here. Uh, before we get into like everything that's happened this week, um, last week we really didn't dive into this, but the lovely Jester um, touched on it in her court. And by the way, that was a killer Jester's court last week. By Absolutely. The way. Thank you. There will be no court this week. Uh, I have a date. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and we'll leave it at that. Um, now the intro has changed because... We have all moved on from Belly Up Sports. Um, I have signed on with Wrestling News World, and it's a fantastic website. It covers just about everything, and we have a lot of things going on, including a first responder um, event that we're partnering with Synergy Pro Wrestling on July 11th. And Kayla, I know you and the Jester are on the... Doing, doing some crazy things yourself. So what's going on on your end? I am now the wrestling managing editor for the wrestling department at Downtown Sports Network, um, which I absolutely love it. Haven't really got an opportunity to actually edit any articles yet, but I got the um, department hopefully running up and getting some in there. Um, and I'm also in the process of creating a new account. It's called Everyday Fan Sports, and I am the CEO and co-founder and wrestling department head over there. So if any writers looking forward for a new opportunity to write, um, hit us up on Facebook at Everyday Fan Sports. Sweet. And I know, Jolie, you're, you're going to be pitching in with both those, right? Uh, yeah, because I'm um, sticking with the podcast and with, um, every day, um, there are going to be branching out into music and entertainment, which hopefully once I get over this hump that I'm in, uh, be able to write or maybe even do, uh, just, uh, gesture courts separately about, you know, different TV shows, movies, um, everything uh, going on right now. So, so, yeah, your favorite trio is on so a lot of different things going on. And so, yeah, so definitely be on the lookout on Twitter from a lot of from a lot of stuff coming from all three of us. All right, so the beginning of the week, of course, with wrestling and everything, uh, uh, we saw like a definitely new look to all of the WWE shows with bar- with the barricades with plastic glass, and then also uh, some WWE like NXT and Performance Center wrestlers in the audience. It definitely brought a new look and it's definitely a new energy. So, Jolie, I'm gonna ask, right, let me go, let me go to you first on this. It's like. Did, did they do this safely, the right way, or some people are actually saying that they're finally copying AEW? Um, I think they did it the safe way. Um, I didn't agree with a lot of what AEW was doing because I mean, they had like their their workers there with kids in the background, so I was like, I couldn't deal with any of that. That actually kind of irked me, and they're not wearing masks. I mean, uh, this one thing that does hurt me is they're not wearing masks. So, we'll see where there, that goes. But are they copying AEW? Yes and no. But, I mean, AEW copied WWE when they started doing live shows again. So, <laughs> in all honesty, Maybe. I feel more energy out of the NXT crowds because they actually boo the faces, or cheer the faces and boo the heels, whereas Mm -hmm. you have no idea what's going on with the AEW crowd. And I do like the plexiglass hockey rink kind of look to it, but you know, that's just me. No, it was actually actually a crazy look, and I knew somebody was getting I knew somebody was going to get thrown into it one one way or another this week, and I definitely saw that a couple of times. And it's like, yeah. It was like watching a hockey rink at you know, no skates or ice. 
And I definitely see what you mean about like the they're actually like cheering the faces and booing the people and everything. Especially when you see especially when you see Jessamine Duke cheering on somebody and she's been a kill for her. <laughs> did, did you see Charlotte go right for her? When she came out on roll, I was dying. I was dying. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so Kayla, what was your feel about the overall look for the show? Um, I kind of agree. It does look like a hockey arena, minus the ice and the skates and the hockey sticks, hockey pucks. Um, it kind of really felt weird actually having people be there booing and cheering. I mean, it's kind of cool maybe to get the little reaction back a little bit. Um, but. Are they copying AEW, like Jolie said? Yes and no. Um, I think WWE's been a little bit more cautious about the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yes, that was funny that Charlotte did come out, went straight for Jasmine Duke. Like, Hi! <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> and it was definitely, see... And see, like, uh, see, like everybody wearing different people shirts. You saw, like, people wearing bra, Becky. Um, I saw some Uso in there. I think some other different ones too, but those are like the ones that kind of stuck out, mm-hmm. stuck out in my mind. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it was like I definitely love. I, I mean, I definitely love the new look, and it definitely does bring a lot more energy and everything. And it's like, it, so it's like kind of like pumping it up a little bit. And it's definitely, yeah, it's, so it's like, I believe that they did like the, the safe way of bringing this about because it's like when they tra- with AEW transferred everything over to Daly's Place, Daly's more of an out- outdoor arena and everything, even though they were having some people in the audience before then, but they have more leeway with the outdoor arena than um, WWE does. And so it's definitely new look, definitely new energy, and I am all for it. Okay, so Kayla, on Monday Night, okay, Monday Night Raw, this stuff with uh, Drew and Bobby Lashley is definitely heating up to the fact that they had to have to catch crazy, huh? I'm still trying to figure out how Lashley really got into the mix with this. Um, but, and, you know, far as I can say, um, I do think Bobby Lashley is a good opponent right now for Drew McIntyre. They could pretty much match up um, together. Um, I will say this. Um, I'm really excited to see how it does plan out with them. Also, I guess you could say MVPs backing them up, mm-hmm. um, which I'd like to see a good Claymore kick to him a couple times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm ready for Lashley to get his WWE Championship opportunity. I believe it would be a great opportunity for him. However, I don't want him to be the one to take it away from Drew. Because right now, I believe that Drew is probably one of the one of the most dis- not disturbing, most deserving people on the Monday Night roster right now that deserves to be WWE champion. He finally got that opportunity. So um, right now, I don't even think I want anybody to take the title off of Drew. So, um, I, I mean, there's nobody on there. I mean, I don't definitely don't want the Monday Night Mariah, I mean, Messiah, to take it off of him. I mean, what is Brock <laughs> Lester going to do? Show nobody back knows. up or whatever? I mean, but I'm just saying, um, right now, there's nobody that deserves it more than McIntyre. Um, but if Lashley was to get the chance to actually become champion, I don't want it to be against Drew. But if it has to be, I, I guess I can bite my tongue and tolerate it, but I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I mean, it's like, as far as like him being deserving of the, this title shot, it's like, I'm totally with you there because it's long overdue for him. Even though like back on, during his first run, he was ECW champion, but it, it's kind of a different feel to it. Um, so, but I def- so it's like, I do like the matchup between the two. These two are two monsters or powerhouses. 
Um, but yeah, I don't want anybody to take the title off Drew for now, for a good long while, because it's like he is being an unbelievable presence and standout for the WWE roster. Um, I, I could not be more happy with Drew as the champion right now. But uh, Jolie, what do you think all the tension heat? What do you think about all this heating up? I'm actually going to enjoy it because we're going to actually see Bobby Lashley have a decent manager, especially an MVP. It gives him a great mentor and somebody better than Lana. Thank <laughs> fuck. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, I, I do believe, um, actually, I wouldn't mind if Drew and Bobby traded the titles back and forth throughout the summer. Like, having it culminate, like, like you know, Drew wins, or let's say Bobby wins it somehow in two weeks. But then Drew wins it at SummerSlam. And then it all leads up to maybe um, TLC. You know, a final rubber match. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe make it a two out of three falls match. Like, you know, I could definitely see them. And they could actually be the ones that actually can put on such a long, progress storyline type match. But regardless um yeah i'm actually excited for this and like i said like drew actually stated that he says what he wants to say and yeah. Vince has given him carte blanche to say what he wants so to me that that says that drew has the utmost respect and um power that some people don't have in the company. Okay. That's 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 definitely true and everything, but either way it's like I mean I definitely kinda wanna see this go past backlash no matter who gets the title and everything. And yeah, it's like with these two being powerhouses, we're it's like we're definitely in for a good show. Oh, it's definitely I think it's definitely gonna be at least leading up to at least another showdown at SummerSlam because I don't think they've announced a July show. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't heard anything yet, but I could be wrong. Well, we could find out. We found out about backlash after Money in the Bank, so That's they true. might announce something after the fact because we still don't know where SummerSlam is being held. That is true. But yeah, so um, yeah, it's definitely going to be a very, very interesting summer, and it's mm-hmm. definitely a program mm-hmm. that I'm looking forward to watching. Yeah, definitely me too. Okay, so from one storyline with two powerhouses to another storyline with two talented tag teams playing games all the time. So it's like the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits are kind of like in a in a battle back and forth with a one upmanship, like anything you can do, I can do better. And so, but it's like it's like Jolie, I'm getting to a point where it's like kind of like enough games already. Oh, I'm actually enjoying it because it's kind of reminding me of um, when Chavo and Eddie used to do those uh, vignettes. And, like, they were doing the golfing and the pool cleaning. So it's it's a nice comedic break. And you you know these guys are having fun with this. Oh, yeah, definitely. And so it's like I'm looking, like, you know it's going to culminate into a match. And I hope the profits retain. Because, you know, it's like the Viking Raiders, the War Raiders, when they were called in NXT, mm-hmm. uh, before they got called up and Vince-ized. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, they just, they, those two powerhouses, like those two teams have always had great classic matches. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, it's, it's, it's culminating into a match and I just can't wait for it. So, let the fun and games, it, it gives... It gives uh, laughter and just a little bit of nostalgia, especially, you know, Montez. (laughs) He just, you know, with everything that is going on right now in the world, not just the coronavirus, but everything else that's going on, just the fact that they give us something to laugh at and just to be joyful and it's, 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 it's a nice break in reality. I can, I can definitely see your point on that. And props to Bianca for making Montez's pants for the golfing. 
the, that dude for the got stuff. some long ass legs. He does. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, I saw Bianca's tweet. She said she wanted to spend like 75 bucks on some golf pants. And so she pulled out the material and made them for him. She said they might not look nice on the inside, but they'll look nice on the outside. <laughs> and they did. They did. Props to you, girl. Oh, I swear. Uh, uh, but Kaylin, like, what do you, like, what are you thinking? Is enough games already or are you liking what you're seeing? Um, it kind of reminds me of when they said, um, anything you can do, I can do better. It kind of jumped me back to NXT with Ricochet and Dream when Dream came out and says, anything Ricochet can do, I can do. And Ricochet just jumps over the ring and says, show me. Um, it kind of, kind of show reminds me a little bit of that because no matter, you know, it's like, oh, I can do it, but you know, um, I, th- I kind of find it entertaining like I uh, said, it is eventually going to end up, you know, being a match. Um, but, and again, I don't know how long they're going to go with these sports. I mean, at this point, we can see swimming, we can see tennis, football, baseball, hockey. Um, but um, eventually it's going to end up being a match. And um, it would be kind of tough because I really do like both um, tag teams. Um but if it came down to a match, I would want the Street Profits to retain, definitely. And yes, uh, kudos to uh, Bianca Belair for making uh, Montez Ford's pants that really did not match his shirt. But um, it's all good, though. <laughs> then what was De- Angelo Dawkins wearing? That didn't help either, so. Nah. And it's like, yeah, all the golf, uh, the golf wear that those guys are wearing, it's like, oh my god, really, seriously. But it's all, I mean, it is all in good fun and everything, but it's mm-hmm. like, I think I think I'm a little, my patience is wearing a little bit thin because it's like, I want something to happen, but I don't know if it's going to happen like a backlash or maybe extend out further, but I guess we'll see what happens at this rate. Alright, so, during Friday Night Smackdown, we got the news from Kurt Angle that one bro, Matt Riddle, is being getting his call up to SmackDown. And at this point, I mean, I don't know why people are still thinking it's like a call up because it's like, I still, I still see it's three separate brands, but some people are still calling it a call up, but either way, but Matt Riddle will be joining the SmackDown roster soon. And that's going to make for some unbelievable matches, especially with who get, who's on their roster right now. So, but with him coming up, uh, Kayla, who's next? Mm, I bounced it back and forth with a couple. Um, maybe possibly Elvichy Dream might be one that could come up. Um, once he returns, because I think he's, what, over in England still, um, would be Pete Dunne. Um, also, a part of me could see this maybe slowly splitting up the Undisputed Era, because, I mean... They dominated long enough in NXT. It's time to move on. Um, so probably anywhere between Pete Dunn, Dream, and maybe the Undisputed Errors getting split up individually. Um, but I could probably see Roderick Strong staying in NXT because of um, Marina Shafir. Yeah. But um, other than maybe Dream and Pete Dunn is the, probably the only two that I could really see maybe come up anytime soon. I um, I know Finn Balor's down there for a while because obviously he's like the NXT Brock Lesnar. He shows up when he wants to. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the only reason he written the NXT. But, um, yeah. I think. But, but at least Finn does the monopolized titles. Yeah, give him a title. He probably will run with it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of Undisputed Era, today marks 365 for Adam Cole. Yay, yay, yay. I know, I know. (laughs) All right. right. Jolie, who's next? I'm going to go off a report I saw. Um, I forget who reported it. But Dominic uh, Dominic Dajakovic. I think he's coming up to Raw. I agree with that one. Um... I think we might see possibly um, I don't see Dunn coming up just yet. 
I don't see Undisputed coming up just yet. Dream could possibly come up. Um, Finn is not the Brock Lesnar of NXT. Miss and, Kayla. And I'm surprised she'd say that, being a thin girl. I mean, Jesus, it's not like he's Mojo Raleigh or anything. But seriously. <laughs> don't, 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 but he still doesn't have a shirt in the shop, by the way. <laughs> Goalie? What the hell, woman? <laughs> Technically, he does. He's associated with Gronk. Um, oh, yeah. But Dominic definitely, uh, I would love to see Keith Lee come up, but now they've got that feud with Candice and uh, Johnny Dipshit. Um, and I honestly love that skit. I'm yeah. sorry, I, I don't know if this was even part of it, but that skit on Wednesday was classic with, with Tegan coming up with the pizza. Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> um, but I would love to see... Um, Keith definitely come up, and maybe even after his feud with um, Finn, Damian Priest come up because I like to see him join um, Seth's crew. I think he'd be a great enforcer for the Messiah, to be perfectly honest. With or without the club? With the club. He's the enforcer. <laughs> Man, uh, but yeah, I um, I did hear some, I did hear things on my end regarding Dominic, and and there's actually a possibility that he might be Apollo's mystery opponent from Monday. Speaking of Apollo, I am so fucking happy he oh beat Andrade. Yes. yes, absolutely. I am. I have. Loved Apollo Crews since I first saw him. And when he was, I was at a Raw event before WrestleMania in Philly, and he came out, and I was one of the few people cheering for him during main event. And he is such a humble dude. He's such a nice dude. And he has finally gotten a title that he deserves to have. So I am so happy about that. I know. I was like so happy too. And it's like the outpour of love he got on Twitter from everybody on all brands. And it's like you can tell like how well loved he is and how much he has busted his ass to get there. And so kudos to him. Congratulations, Apollo. And don't let that thing go. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, all right. So, okay. So. We had a little bit of craziness on Friday. Like, what the hell was that to start off SmackDown? The show starts. It's outside the Performance Center. All hell's broken loose. Police cars, ambulances. There's a, a car, car like, on its heels and everything on its side. And apparently somebody ran into Elias, took him out of the tournament. And they suspected Jeff Hardy of drinking and driving. So he got arrested and he got taken out of the tournament as well. Uh, um, Kayla, what the hell? Um, it kind of, it kind of hit a rough spot for me on that because, like I said, I've never really been a big fan of WWE bringing in personal life. Um, and I think bringing his addiction and stuff that he's trying to clean up was a little harsh. Um, and uh, I was uh talking to our fellow wrestler. KC earlier and he was agreeing with me on how he didn't like how they brought that whole addiction and stuff in because um, it was part where it felt if you're trying to get over something why mention something like that so um, I don't I mean obviously you, Jeff had to sign off on it but I think that would kind of eat him alive too a little bit like okay I'm trying to get over this why are you making me sign this you know but if they offered him money for it, I guess, why not? But I thought in a way they could have gone around a little bit. Maybe left the drinking part out. Something, Drinking, yeah. Drinking, driving. Maybe make it sound like, oh, you just, hit a, you just hit a pedestrian. But as far as the whole alcohol and drinking and stuff, what he's been through, I think was a little out there. So um, they could have gone a little different with it. That's 
that's what I think. That's just my opinion. So, but it hit a nerve that they did that. Yeah, I was like kind of like 50-50 about this and everything. It's like, yeah, it's like bringing personal issues. But yeah, you, I mean, they couldn't really do anything like that unless he, he more than likely signed off on it. Mm-hmm. And but like the overall way that they kind of filmed everything is like kind. Of, I mean, it was I like I like I mean I like as far as like production wise and everything. It's like they they did film it like kind of like on the spot and so like on the spot and everything. So it's like I mean yeah, it was kind of crazy how it played out on. But it kind of pissed me off like competition wise because I was actually looking forward to seeing Jeff Hardy and Daniel Bryan. I was like, hey, I was even excited maybe seeing Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles or something. Yeah, I was, it's like, it took a lot, of, I mean, that took like some matches out of the way there and everything, but, and it, it conspicuous by his absence, they were deciding the whole battle royal thing in the beginning of that, after, after the whole accident and everything, I didn't, I did not see one uh, Mustafa Ali, which makes me think even more that he's the hacker, but I'm getting off track, <laughs> but, um, all right, but Jolly, what did you think about that whole segment and everything? I completely disagree with Kayla's point of view and uh, Casey's as well. As somebody who knows multiple people that have gone through addiction and needed somebody to look up to, I think that him putting out his demons like this is actually a very smart thing to do, especially in today's day and age, especially with people who are probably struggling with addiction and can't go to meetings or have the ability to speak with a counselor or get um, sobriety help in this in this time. So it was definitely, to me, something that was done beautifully. And I had called off right from the bat when they arrested him. Um, they did not do a breathalyzer, nor did they do uh, a field sobriety test. And he only smelled of alcohol. Therefore, mm-hmm. they couldn't actually prove that he drank anything. So, again, this is beautiful storytelling, which started all the way back when they first started saying that Jeff was coming back and Seamus was getting pissed off. This is what mm-hmm. we call long-term storytelling. This is creating <laughs> a long-term feud, especially with Seamus. These two guys have been around the park multiple times. And I think it was just a beautiful way of getting it done. And I like the fact that he came back and everybody's all confused why he's back. And I'm sitting here like because he passed this field sobriety test and breathalyzer. Just because you smell of alcohol does not mean you automatically get arrested. The only (laughs) distasteful thing that I felt was they should have redone it because of what happened Monday night and what's going on in society today i think that that was the only distasteful thing about it because with the fact that there's issues with police officers there's issues with everything that is going on right now um i know we're not political or anything like that but it's just that 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 was the only distasteful part of it and you know that jeff signed off on it and for all we know jeff might be thinking i might help one person if i can save one person who's struggling with their demons and struggling with sobriety and struggling with addiction, if I can save one person, then this storyline is worth it. That is a very good point. Because and, it's like, yeah. yeah. And the fact that you have the clown car known as Rebby making comments, and I don't know if it was about the whole Jeff thing, but from what I've read, though, their families haven't talked in a year. Like, there is actually a serious divide between J- Matt and Jeff because of Rebby. So, I think the Queen Bee needs to shut the fuck up. Because this is Jeff's life. They are no longer a part of the WWE. They are a part of AEW. They don't need to be commenting on WWE. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't about WWE, then I'm sorry, Rebby. But you know what? It was very inconspicuous that it was posted right after... Um, I think she said she's throwing out her TV. And I don't know what it was about, but it was just really odd that it was at the same time that SmackDown aired that bit. So if it was about something else, then Rebby, I apologize. But if not, when it comes to WWE, when it comes to Jeff Hardy, shut the fuck up. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, I don't know if they would have actually, I mean, it's because of what happened this week and everything i i mean i don't know if they actually would have had time to reshoot it i mean um but i could i could definitely see your point about that 
But um, yeah, that was like it was like a whole bunch of craziness to start. And it, I mean, afterward, and it was like after the episode, WWE released the results of his sobriety test, quote unquote, to kind of further the storyline and everything. So I know, yeah, based on what happened at the end of SmackDown, this thing is far from over. That's for damn sure. And can we just say, welcome back, Drew Gulak. Thank you for re-signing a contract. We missed you. Yay! <laughs> and, I mean, props, I hoping... and props to Jay Uso getting a slight singles push. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, because it's like, uh, some somebody was mentioning, like, there's no tag teams involved. He's a, rest, he's a wrestler. He can go on his mm-hmm. own. He does singles matches all the time. He doesn't always have to tag with Jimmy. But, I mean, he actually was really good in that match, and it's like, I was actually very happy to see, like, you know, Jay get, you know, some recognition outside it. And with the fact that Drew's back, it's going to, and now by mind with Riddle coming to SmackDown. Riddle versus Gulak. <laughs> Riddle versus Brian. Riddle yeah. versus Ziggler. Riddle versus Goldberg come out of retirement. You pussy. Riddle versus, <laughs> Riddle versus The Fiend. Ooh. Probably but, be the first time I'd go for Matt Riddle if that's the case. And I will say <laughs> that match between Thatcher and Riddle. No, it's like I know when I saw I they came in it was like, like I know it was like supposed to be like a cage, but then I saw like that and then they classified it as a fight pit. It's like it it it, it kind of blows the steel ca- the regular steel cage matches like out of the water. That thing was glorious. That was like Thunderdome, but without the top on it. I mean, <laughs> you could fight on the top ledge, and when he hit that moonsault, oh my god, he knocked out Thatcher's teeth. It, it was a brutal match, and you know, I like that better than the stadium stampede match. I'm sorry I did. Nah, yeah, no, it was definitely, yeah, it was definitely, it was like an awesome match and everything. Those, those guys were, it was like nuts. All right. That to be his last match on NXT. Bravo Bravo. to both of those guys. And welcome back, Kurt Angle. I thought you got fired. (laughs) Oh, man. But it's like, I think, yeah, I think he's going to come back for a little bit more and everything. And, oh. Speak, I mean, speaking of and everything, um, Drake Maverick getting to the finals. And, oh, and, and the fact that Kushida said, I know he, it was a simul, like, simul, almost simultaneous that uh, Atlas tapped, but he said, you fight. And then Drake says, when I win, you're the, my first opponent. I'm like, this is why I love Kushida. <laughs> and it's... Can I just point this out? People were actually bitching about how they haven't used Kushida properly. A lot of people don't know that are not overall wrestling fans don't know who Kushida was from New Japan. I didn't know who he was. So I think that the fact that they've been adding him in slowly and getting him involved, especially in this, and getting him involved with Undisputed Era. (laughs) I, I, I brain farted there for a minute. Um... That like you know that he's working with Undisputed Era, you know, it works. They they are bringing him in a lot more. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Listen, listen. This off with some predictions. Okay. So Sunday, June seventh, NXT Takeover in your house. They've got five matches scheduled so far. I don't know if they're going to put any more on the card this week, but. Since this is our really our last chance to do any predictions before the show, let's let's get some out of the way. Okay, so we have the North American Championship, the champion Keith Lee defending against Johnny Gargano. And be- before we predict this one, I would have rather have seen this be in a mixed tag match if that if it were up to me. I, oh, I I, I, mean, I completely agree with that, but they might save that for the takeover before SummerSlam. That's a be- that's a bigger match. That's a better match for that type of takeover, to be perfectly honest. Okay. All right. But I know but I know the girls are going to get at it this week because Candace Candace doesn't want the pixie, little pixie doesn't want to wait. But um all right. So, North American Championship Gargano versus Lee. 
Kayla, who you got? I got Keith Lee. Um, I don't see Gargano becoming champion again. Uh, I mean, they could. Um, but maybe with the whole, like you said, the tag team going on Candace and um, the whole feud with uh, Cross and Scarlett, um, I don't see Gargano getting a title. So I'm going to go Keith Lee. But the way WWE is, sometimes they should, they could shock us. So, but um, I'm going to bask in his glory. Lee's going to retain. Okay. Hey, Jolly, who do you got? Keith Lee all day, every day. Of course. <laughs> um, but I could see Johnny winning via DQ, or I mean, um, doing underhanded with Candace, which is going to get Mia involved. So we actually could have, now that I think about it, we could actually have, especially if Candace gets involved with the match, Mia comes out, gets involved, and they said, all right, uh, mixed tag, intergender tag, because you know Mia will, Mia has fought Keith and Matt Riddle in the past, um, and I've seen her flip Keith, which is actually pretty cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keith Lee? Yeah, when she was, when they were both in the Indies, yeah. Oh. He flipped her, yeah. She, fl- she flipped I him. mean, she flipped him, yeah. I've seen, Ooh. I know what she's talking about. <laughs> Holy shit. Mia, Mia is a badass. Yeah, I knew she was a badass, but damn, uh, uh, Keith's a big boy. Damn, more power to you, girl. Whoo! More Maybe. I, I, Maybe that's what got him interested in her. You don't know. <laughs> I like a strong woman. <laughs> oh, wow. But yeah, yeah no, so uh, either way, it's it's going to be a great match. It's definitely not one to sleep on. I don't think any of the card is one to sleep on, to be perfectly honest. So I'm definitely looking forward to what's going to happen. So, But my prediction is Keith Lee. Oh, yeah, we're three for three on that one. It's like Keith Lee, yeah, all day, every day. Got to go with my Texas brother there. All right. So next we have um, Kayla's favorite, uh, Mr. Finn Balor, going against Mr. I Can't Keep the Club to Myself, Damian Priest. Uh, Kayla, I know this isn't obvious, but for the record, Um, I'm just going to flat out just come out and say it straight out, make it sweet and short, um, and make it too sweet. Um, Finn Balor is going to checkmate Damian Priest and knock him, knock him down on the chessboard like he did everybody else. So Finn Balor. Yeah, Mr. Priest needs to learn his lesson. So yeah, I'm definitely going with Finn as well. I'll be shocked if Damian actually wins. Mm-hmm. But uh, Joe, um. I'm definitely going with Finn, but I could also see this uh, possibly ending in a double countout or double disqualification leading up to another match. Because I don't see this ending anytime soon. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, definitely Finn winning, but I don't want to see it end anytime soon because... I think they could actually play off each other very well. Finn has a way of wrestling larger men um, a lot better than the guys his own size for some reason. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. NXT Championship. Adam Cole defended against Velveteen Dream. This is Velveteen's last shot. If he does not win, he cannot challenge again. Like Cole still has the belt, and Mr. Regal is going to make this in a remote location. I actually know that they've already filmed the match. Do I know what happened? Hell no. But um, but this is going to be like one, one final. This is going to be one final battle between the two for the title. So Jolie, who's who's taking it home? Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love Dream. I think that he has been well-deserved of the uh, NXT men's title. But 
I don't see him being the one to dethrone Adam. Uh, Dream, that could be a reason why he, if he loses, he gets called up. So we will see what happens, but uh, my pick is undisputed. Adam Cole, baby. All righty. Kayla? I'm going to make it short and sweet to the point. Adam Cole, baby, is going to retain the title. <laughs> and congratulations, bud, for officially making um, a year as the NXT champion as long and reigning at 365 days. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence with this one because it's like, Cole's contract's up this summer, too, and everything. But, um, I'll screw it. I'll disagree. I'll go dream. <laughs> we, don't, we don't always have to agree. I mean, you I, can't I break up the trio. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I know the three of us get along so well. We usually are under the same opinions about mostly everything, but it's like hell. Throw another log in the fire at times. All righty. All right, so this one, I don't. Okay, we might differ on this match too. The NXT Women's Championship Triple Threat match. We have Charlotte Flair defending the title against Io Shirai, Rhea Ripley. This one's going to be hell. This one's going to be a brawl. This one's going to be a fight, and I cannot wait. Kayla, who's taking the title? I'm going to do a little something different instead of actually saying who. I think deserves it, who should get it. So who I really want to win and become champion is Io Sarai. But my prediction is that Charlotte Flair is going to retain. So I'm going to do something a little different. Maybe if I go for the opposite, maybe my person will win. <laughs> so I'm trying a little something different right now. So I'm going Charlotte Flair. <laughs> a little reverse psychology there? Mm, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would. I mean, to be honest with you, I'd be happy with either three. But out of all of them, I would really love Io Shirai to have the opportunity. So, yeah. But like I said, I'm just going to because maybe if I want Io to win, maybe if I go with Charlotte and say, "Oh, Charlotte's going to retain," maybe I might be <laughs> wrong on that. That she won, and Io wins. Maybe not saying nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The boss lady has spoken. Pound. Leave it, leave it at that. All right. Yes. Jolie. Jolie. Uh, I would like for Io or Rhea to win. Um, but I would prefer that Rhea wins so Io gets called up and becomes part of a trio with Asuka and Kyrie, And then Nia Jax needs to run scared. <laughs> and I don't as much as Charlotte has been doing and I don't care what people say when it comes to Charlotte I will defend her um, I just feel that people have been putting so much like she she's finally doing what she's supposed to be doing doing storylines and progressing stories and but I, I don't want Charlotte to retain. But it's going to be a battle. And it's going to be brutal. It better be brutal. Mm -hmm. And if I don't see Kendo stick out there, then I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> I mean, it is a triple threat, so no DQs and everything. So, yeah, Charlotte might bring, introduce Mr. Kendo again. Oh. oh. I, I mean, a lot of... People are wanting EO to get called up and everything, but she's worked her ass off in NXT for so long, and I'm really, I'm hoping that she takes the title. Uh, it's like, it's like so long overdue for her, and it's like, it's like she deserves it. She earned it. And so, so I'm definitely going for EO on this one. Alright, so, the last match, I, I guess this one's kind of a toss-up, but but I guess get to see get y'all's opinions on this. Tommaso Champion, yeah, sorry, Tommaso Champa versus Karrion Cross. Charlotte in his corner. Jolie, what do you got? 
I got Karrion Cross winning this, and I have a feeling that the way that Scarlet was out just scouting him and the way that Karrion keeps calling Tommaso special, it's just screaming possible faction to me. So, I, I say Karrion wins, and a defeated Champa joins uh, Karrion Cross. Weren't you the one who was like saying you would hope these two tag up? Yep. Because okay. they would be absolutely fucking brutal. Yeah. Uh, uh I guess I guess on my end it's just I'm looking at this and everything and I know it'd be horrible for Karrion to lose like his first takeover match, but I'm kinda of like an underdog and I'm I'm always for like the underdog in this case, it would be Chompa unfortunately. As much as I love Champa, I, I gotta go with Cross too. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I, I, there's no way I can go against him in this case. Kayla, fall in pray, fall in pray. <laughs> I hate to tell you, Karrion Cross is going to win. Um, I do absolutely love seeing him in. Scarlet in NXT. Tomas Chimpa's always been one of my favorite as well. Um, but I think he's will come up short with this one and um, Cross is going to win. Okay. Oh. And so Chimpa, you better fall and pray because you're going to need a buddy. Man, and I heard something about how they're going to do the setup for this one and everything. It's like they're bringing back like kind of like the crazy old setup. I don't know if y'all heard anything about that. No. Oh, as far as the NST takeout the, in the house? Yeah. I, I haven't really looked into it, but I n- read something that is supposed to be like something way what they used to have. I just don't remember... Exactly. Now, because the way the it's set up, like the little house or whatever, it kind of reminds me. What is that? Um, it's on uh, WWE Network. Um, House of Legends, Legends or whatever. This uh, kind of just reminds me of the symbol of that. But okay, I haven't really heard how it's going to be. Might be interesting. At this yeah. rate, it might be another boneyard match. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I know everything's going to be in there on the set except except for um, the Cole and Dream match because they, mm-hmm. they filmed that. Yeah, they because they filmed that already. So definitely, I can't wait to see what they do with that one. <sighs> All right, so next week we'll probably have some backlash predictions, and if his schedule clears up, we'll have our old friend of the show, Mr. Casey, back for as. Uh, as a guest host and see what he's up to these days. But uh, good times to come. All right. So that's all we have for this episode of the Queen's Takeover. Wait, 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 wait. No, we have one more thing. What? The possible new tag team to go against Imperium. Danny have... Birch and Oni Lockon. Did they set the match yet? They haven't set the match yet, but they're going to challenge them. I don't know if it's going to be for this takeover, but they are going to challenge them. We actually were talking about that the other week. Like, what tag teams besides Undisputed are there? There's your tag team, and I think that'd be absolutely bloody brilliant. Yeah, because it's like, I, I mean, at first I really couldn't, I really didn't give those guys a lot of stock, but, like, they've been definitely coming up a lot lately and everything, and so they might end up being, like, a good challenge for Imperium. I don't know. If they'll actually win, but it's definitely going to be a good. It's definitely be a good match, no matter what. And is the uh, El Hijo de Fantasma and Drake Maverick match this week? That one's actually going to be Wednesday. Well, we didn't do predictions for that, and I predict Drake wins. Oh my bad, my bad. I, yeah, that's you know what? We, yeah, we didn't put that on the list, but um, yeah. The, no, but definitely, yeah, I definitely want to see Drake win and uh, stick around with that in it, with the Cruiserweight title. I mean, I um, honestly feel that they have done, if this is his last time in WWE, which I'm hearing it might not be, 
But if it is, they definitely gave him one of the most heartfelt send-offs that any superstar that has been fired from a company has ever gotten. I mean, it's like with everything that, I mean, when you think about it and everything, I it's like the only way I could really see this playing out is with him winning the title because it's like if they keep, if they keep him on and with the heartfelt story and just the emotions and everything like that and then end up still losing the final, it's like, and him being gone from the company, that would just, like, absolutely be horrible. But, um, what do you think, Kayla? Um, I really don't know what to say. I drew a blank. <laughs> Well, maybe you weren't texting your your your, your sweetheart there. Shut up. <laughs> she heard it. Um, <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna pass because I just drew a blank right there. Yeah, excuse the boss lady. She just Yeah. She <laughs> She's fifty she's fifty fifty on this topic, folks, so we'll just let her be before she starts uh losing her mind over there in Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a good thing we're not in per in, we're not doing this in person because she'll probably want to chunk shit at both of us right now. Hey, I'm ready. I got a baseball bat right near me, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, but this week's definitely coming up. I mean, NXT's got a lot of stuff coming up up on the plate, and it's definitely going to be killer, knocking it out of the park. The following week, we got backlash, and then. And then uh, have to see what happens with an event coming up in July, and we definitely got to see what's happening. Uh, see what happens coming up with uh, SummerSlam. Also, That's- we got the SmackDown Women's t- or not the SmackDown Women's title, the Women's Tag Titles next Friday. That Boston is very. But uh, yeah, yeah, and and uh, that definitely might throw another wrench into the pending uh, feud between those two. I I heard a rumor that they actually asked to put this off just a little bit longer because they want the uh, they want the audience there for that, but I'm not 100 percent sure if that was true. It better not be. I saw something for that too. How they wanted, if Sasha was going to win the title, they wanted her to have that pop in her hometown of Boston, Massachusetts. But if we think about it, you know the tag. This, if they lose this could be a way to actually start to fracture everything, especially if there was incidents or were like Bailey hit her or something like that. But can we just say that Nikki Cross is a national treasure and her <laughs> on commentary is like Asuka on commentary. It is always welcomed, especially with Michael Cole and Graves. I mean, she just plays on Michael Cole so much and, <laughs> it was it's, just hilarious. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And like, it, it, it's like Corey, like looking at Bailey is like going, do they have a word for what she's gone or what she's going through or something like that? It's like, do they have a word for it? And it's like pure emotion and excitement. It's like, oh, it, it was, so, it was so beautiful. Oh, and Hey, Hey, uh, speaking of, speaking of commentary and everything, uh, I know it's like throwing this out at the last minute, but what did y'all think about like the words about uh, coming out about Samoa Joe? Thank Kayla? God. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm with Jolie on that. Thank God, because um, I really enjoy Joe being on commentary. He he can actually get into it. He knows he knows his stuff. He's Beyond definitely not annoying like J uh not JR. Um the King Jerry Lawler was. Um so yeah, that actually you know, kinda made kinda made my um day when I found that out. I hope he's not there forever because I do like him in the ring. Okay. But um as far but as far as him being on commentary, if I can't have Renee Young, I'd rather have Joe instead of Lawler any day. So, <laughs> <laughs> Jolly. Even though he's a heel, I love that he's able to play up both sides. 
He doesn't act like the dick heel like Graves does. He right. doesn't belittle who he's working with. I absolutely love what he's doing on the uh, on the commentary. And, you know, again, I go back whenever Asuka's with them, it's just great. Like he, he talks to her and acts like he understands what she's saying. He might. I don't know. But it's like I just love how he interacts. And especially when Seth's out there, that whole thing is just, you know he still has disdain for Seth. Oh, yeah. And I honestly feel that when he actually comes off the commentary table, that his first feud is going to be with Seth. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I love, like, his reactions to a lot of what's going on in the ring. My favorite, my absolute favorite is whenever uh, Drew McIntyre does Glasgow Kiss and everything, he always, like, goes, Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that is like, but it's like, it was good news to hear, but yes, I do want him back in the ring eventually and everything, but yes, while he's, while he's not cleared, this is definitely good uh, secondary position for him as commentary, so more power to him. And what do we think about them banning the um, buckle bomb? <laughs> Way to go, Naya. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Seth. Well, it's, like, yeah, it's, it's mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, he's been care- he's been more careful, but I think they really applaud it now because of Naya, what she did. So, but I mean, because it's like that's that was like a part of like Seth's like uh, arsenal as far as his moves and everything. But yeah, they really did it. They really outlawed it because of uh, Naya. So, way to go, girl. Well, they could always bring it back because remember, for the longest time, they um, took it uh, took Seth's uh, curb stop away. That's true. And yeah, they brought it, it back. Yes, but he does it a lot safer now. I think they have to. What they might do is at the performance center, once everything gets back up and running, you know, practice how to do it safely and not botchy like Nia botch. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the fact that. She has injured multiple opponents, and I get that when she goes after um, Ronda Rousey, but she needs to look in her mirror and go after herself, too, because she has hurt just as many people as uh, Ronda has, um, if not worse than Ronda. So... And then hell, it's like they were taping another episode of Raw, and it's like they had to stop and match for a moment because she heard Kyrie, but Kyrie got back up and finished the match too. But it's like, yeah, what is what is it with her and Kyrie? It's like some stuff always goes south these days. Unfortunately, they need to put somebody. I mean, her match with Ronda was actually really good. When she's with people that are of larger or normal stature and not tiny, she's fine. But when they go tiny, like Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, Bailey, um, Kyrie, she just absolutely destroys them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, get some training. All right, so okie dokie. So, did I miss anything else? <laughs> no, I think you're good. All right, all right. Well, that's all we have for this week on the episode of this week's episode of the Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us, and tune in next time as the takeover continues. Y'all have a good one.